Hi YouTube, it's Kathy, and this is my March 2018 reading wrap-up. If you're not already aware, I do weekly entertainment wrap-ups of everything I read, watch, and listen to. But recently I started doing wrap-ups of just the books, which is what we're doing today. I'm going to start with my nerdy, hardcore stats and charts, and then work my way from my lowest star rated book to my highest star rated book. In March, I read 12 books for a total of 4,749 pages. That takes into account converting audiobook minutes to pages, so 2,255 of those pages were actually 86 hours of audiobook. The age breakdown for these books was 6 adult books and 6 YA books. Without meaning to, I've had a 50-50 split the past couple of months. This month I read mostly contemporary at 58.3%, followed by 8.3% or one book each of non-fiction, horror, historical fiction, science fiction, and fantasy. If you adjust for the amount of pages in each genre, horror gets a much bigger piece of the pie because Stephen King put 400 pages of originally cut content back in the edition of his book I read this month. 75% of these books, no surprise, came from the library where I work, but I borrowed a couple and one was a gift. I read four audiobooks, four paperback books, three hardcover books, and one uncorrected proof. The majority of my books were in the 300 to 399 page range, and about half of them were published this year or last year. Most of these books were by female authors, and most of the protagonists were also female. I read books set in the United States, United Kingdom, and other worlds. In terms of diversity, all of my reads had some aspect of diversity, be it mental health, race, queer rep, physical disability, or combinations therein. This was a pretty good reading month if you go by star ratings. This month I read one 3-star book, three 3.5-star books, three 4-star books, two 4.5-star books, and three 5-star books. Let's start with the lowest rated book and work our way up to the highest, shall we? My three-star read this month was An Unkindness of Ghosts by Rivers Solomon. Although this one had a lot of creativity, it boils down to basically slavery in space, and there's a trope in science fiction I hate, which is we have this future society, but we've regressed to being super homophobic and racist, and all of the bad things that currently exist have gotten worse in the future. I really hate this trope. Although this book definitely had interesting things to say about gender and race, it was hard to read them in this future where one would hope these issues would have been alleviated. Our main character is on a generation ship that is run by a monarchy. That monarchy is dying, she has medical skills, but she doesn't want to use it to help him. In fact, right now might be a really good time for a revolution. My first 3.5 star read this month was Beneath the Sugar Sky by Shauna McGuire. This is the third in the Wayward Children series. What I love most about this series is every book seems to go into a different fantasy world, which is just so much fun. This one went into a world where logic is very different than our own world, and I really like that we got to see some of the characters from previous books that aren't in our world world or this weird, less logical world. My next 3.5 star read was Kindred Spirits by Rainbow Rowell. I picked this up while I was visiting St. Petersburg, and it's just an itty bitty little book about people that like Star Wars. It is a very tiny little novella, and it's Rainbow Rowell, so it's cute and obviously also nerdy, which is a thing that I enjoy. It basically follows some characters that are sitting outside the theater waiting for The Force Awakens to open. Unlike in the 70s, you don't really need to do this, and there's only a few of them doing it, and they feel weird about it, but also excited for the movie. And it has a cute little twist at the end that I really enjoyed. My last 3.5 star read was It Looks Like This by Rafi Middlefeld. This is the one that I got as a gift while I was in Florida. This one is a very tragic queer YA, so if you're not looking to have tragedy in your queer rep, this is not the book to read. In some aspects it is a really sweet coming-of-age tale where this character does figure out that he's queer and has a crush on another boy and it's adorable, but then tragedy ensues. This book actually went to some places that I haven't really seen in queer lit because I try to avoid the very tragic queer lit, but our protagonist does spend some time at a conversion camp of all places. So obviously trigger warnings up the wazoo for this book. But if you feel like this is something you can read, it was a very hard-hitting tale that I think you could get something out of. My first four-star read was Do Not Disturb by A.R. Tor, which is the second in the Deanna Madden series. And obviously, being a second book, I'm not going to talk too much about it, but it pretty much picks up where the last one left off. In the last one, you follow a character who is a cam girl with murderous tendencies, so you can just imagine where this next one might go. It was still sexy, I still enjoyed the characters, and I will eventually read the third one just to see how it all ties up. My next four star read was the longest book that I have read in a very long time, and that was The Stand by Stephen King. This was a 48 hour audiobook, and I read it in about a week because I had to for a weekly wrap up. Whoops. So The Stand is an epic dystopian novel following many characters 
before, during, and after a super flu wipes out about 99% of the population. There's a lot of lines drawn in terms of good and evil. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, originally this book was 400 pages shorter because the accounting team made him make some cuts, and this was like a 10 year anniversary release where he was allowed to put back in 400 pages, so it was long. That being said though, King really knows what he's doing with his writing and writing characters, and this is basically a very large collection of character studies, so it was very enjoyable from that aspect. Also being Stephen King and also being published almost 30 years ago, there is some problematic language. But at this point in his career, I think you know if you're going into a Stephen King, especially an older one, it's going to have those elements. And because I don't know any differently about him, I assume that the characters he's included have been attempts at including those types of characters, as a opposed to making fun of those types of characters. I like to give people the benefit of the doubt. I do not, however, recommend listening to the entire audiobook in one week because there's way too much audiobook for one week, even when you put it on double speed. It's still 24 hours of audiobook in one week. Don't do this to yourself. Learn from my mistakes. My last four-star read was Erotic Stories for Punjabi Widows by Bali Kaur Jaswal. This audiobook is a much more reasonable length at about ten and a half hours, and it follows Nikki, who lives in London and is the daughter of Indian immigrants, who drops out of law school, much the chagrin of her parents, because she's not passionate about it. While she's trying to figure out what she's passionate about, she sees a flyer uh, indicating that the local community center needs a teacher for a creative writing class. She likes to write, she likes empowering women, she figures this is a really good fit for her. When she gets there, she realizes that the class is not exactly what she thought it was going to be. And then from there, it changes to something even more interesting. I'm sure you can figure out where it goes based on the title of the book. I really enjoyed reading this. I was intrigued by the culture of the women who were in the class. It was interesting to see the perspective of immigrants and then also the perspective of their children. I also really enjoyed that Nikki's sister is much more traditional than she is, so we see most of the things through Nikki's perspective. She's very feminist and liberal and forward-thinking, whereas her sister wants a traditional arranged marriage. It just feeds into the fact that people can be in a culture and do things differently than each other, but still be a part of the same culture. My first four and a half star read was This Adventure Ends by Emma Mills. This one was adorable. I read this really early in the month, so although I remember some of the things I like about it, I know that I've forgotten a bunch of it already because I read it before I went on my trip and I've been go, go, go ever since that trip started. So our main character, Sloane, moves into a new town during her last year in high school because basically moving for her dad's job, sort of. Her dad is a writer, but his last book kind of bombed and he has a bunch of writer's block and they figure if they move to this new area, it might help him. While Sloane is there, she meets a group of new friends, cool things ensue, and her dad gets into fan fiction and the writing thereof, and it's wonderful. There's all sorts of different types of relationships in this book. Familial relationships, friend relationships, romantic relationships, and I really enjoyed how it all came together. My other four and a half star read was The Devil in White City by Eric Larson. This is non-fiction about the creating of the Columbus World's Fair, as well as H.H. H. Holmes, who was a prolific serial killer during that time and also before that time. So I originally went into this knowing that I wanted to read about H.H. H. Holmes because I had heard about him on Sherlock of all places and I wanted to know more about this serial killer. A lot of this book is about the architects of the fair, so it is kind of a 50-50, which I wasn't expecting but I definitely still enjoyed. So many things came out of the World's Fair that are still in use today and I have so many little tidbits in the back of my mind that I can just pull up in fun conversation, which I never have because I stay at home all the time. So many things were invented for or premiered at the World's Fair. You know, the squash commemorative pennies? World's Fair. Also spray paint, the Ferris wheel. Unfortunately, Pap's blue ribbon, which... And then on the serial killer side of things, we have this very complex man who created a hotel in which to kill people. Both aspects of this book were extremely fascinating. My first five-star read this month was a reread of Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli. I reread this as part of the Travel Simon project and I did a video on it, so I will link that in places. Obviously, being a reread, I knew I was going to love it. I loved it again. Duh. And at this point, if you don't know what Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda is, hi. 
Uh, so it's about this boy who falls in love with another boy over email, but nobody knows he's gay and nobody knows the other boy is gay. And then somebody finds his emails and blackmails him. It's about friendship, it's about family, it's about coming out, and it should be about coming out on your own terms and not somebody else's. And oh yeah, they recently made a movie about it, which I watched last week and loved. My next five star read was The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. Yes, I'm late to the party on this one. I knew I was going to love it, but I also had this weird aversion to doing the super popular thing at the same time as everyone else. And of course, the example I always use for this is I didn't read Harry Potter until 2013. I'm glad I I didn't wait as long in this case because this book is amazing and I want the sequel now. But let's go with this book. This is an adventure tale following Monty and his best friend Percy and his sister Felicity as they embark on a European adventure that goes sideways very quickly. Basically this is the 18th century version of a gap year and they're supposed to drop Felicity off at this finishing school along the way but before that happens, spoilers. <laughs> Basically I don't even want to tell you because I got to what happened without having heard it before and I'm so glad because I hate going into something knowing too much of the plot. A lot of the things I pick up because I hear just kind of the buzzwords and or I like the cover and I'm like I will read this please. This is a book that examines privilege in a very interesting interesting way, and I just loved it. I can't wait for the second one to come out in October. I am so excited. And my last five-star read of the month of March was Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. I loved this book. I started reading this book firstly, and it starts exactly 50 years before I was born, so that was cool. Then you get into this really interesting character basically finding out that she's going to go to this very cool school for people that are too smart to be in the schools that they're currently in, basically. Even though she has no money, she's going tuition free, it's great, I fell in love with this character, and then we flash forward to current times. I love the mysteries, I loved it so much. Our actual protagonist is a girl that studies criminology and cold cases, and she has studied what happened when this school opened because there were some murders. And basically, she doesn't want to say it out loud, but she's there to solve the murders. This is the first in a series that I am definitely going to continue, and now I'm happy that I finally jumped into some Maureen Johnson, and I'm gonna read more things while I'm waiting for the next one of these to come out, because Hmm, I like these characters so much. If you want to hear me talk more about these books, or other books for that matter, the playlist for my weekly entertainment wrap-ups is always in the description below. If you have read any of these, please let me know about it down in the comments below. On the way down to the comments, if you hit that subscribe button, that would be very nice of you. You can like and share this as you see fit, and I will see you soon. Bye!